Good afternoon. Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'd like to call to order the regular monthly meeting of the Pinal County Community College District Governing Board. And uh, to begin, uh, Gladys, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our first item on the agenda is to uh, is to adopt the agenda, and uh, before we do that, we have two minor changes to make. First of all, item number five, which is executive session, uh, we will not be holding an executive session today, so we're going to remove that from the agenda. And secondly, item seven reads um, binding letter of intent. It should read non-binding letter of intent. So. With those two modifications, could I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Thank you. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, next call to the public. Uh, Mary Lou, do we have anyone? Okay, thank you. Um, then we will move to consideration of the consent agenda. Uh, we have two items on the consent agenda today. If any board member wish to remove either of those uh, for discussion? No? Very well then. I hear a motion to adopt the consent agenda. So moved. That motion. <laughs> Second. So moved and seconded. Thank you. Mary Lou, uh, roll call vote, please. Aye. Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, that brings us to the um, report from the college president, Dr. Elliott. Oh, I, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I missed my item that I changed. Uh, sorry about that. Mr. Watson, non binding letter of intent. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, governing board members, Madam President, Secretary, and colleagues and, and guests this afternoon. Um, action item before you today is the possible sale of the Casa Grande Center and the surrounding uh, parcels of land. If you recall last, uh, last month's board meeting, we notified the board that we would be engaging with a company called BBG to do an appraisal of the property. Since our last board meeting, uh, BBG um, completed their appraisal. Uh, included in your packet is the two-page executive summary the document itself is about 90 so odd pages um, from BBG that valued the property at $1,060,000. I reviewed the uh, appraisal report um, with the BBG uh, appraiser that signed the document, Mr. Uh, Masterakis, and then I spoke with uh, Dorito Partners, who is the, uh, the outfit purchasing um, potentially purchasing the property as well. And we went over a few points as far as some of the comparables, some of the square footage, um, square feet per the property, depending on which parcel it was. If you notice in the appraisal, they, they parceled two things, one being the building and the parking lot around it versus the empty space, which used to be um, housing that existed. Um, we looked at some of that. Some of that was about uh, six to nine months old, I asked them if they would consider uh, increasing the value. Um, and with that, they sent a non-binding letter of intent. As you see in your packet, it is to a letter of intent to purchase the Casa Grande Center and the adjoining parcels for a purchase price of $1,150,000, which is $110,000 more than is that correct? Yeah. Uh, than the original, than the appraisal itself. So uh, it's a non binding agreement. If the board approves for us this non binding letter, the next step would be to uh, engage in negotiations um, with a purchase contract. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from the board? 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Waka, for putting this together. Um, just a question on that we're you're asking the board only to um, approve the binding agreement, not the purchase at this point. There's still another step. Well, the, the, the next step would be to um, speak with Dorito, which I'd be happy to do tomorrow, and uh, tell them that the non binding agreement has been approved. And if they want to continue to proceed, the next step would be a purchase contract, which we would bring to the board. Okay, thank you. Anything else from the board? Then I would hear a motion to approve the non-binding letter of intent. So moved. Is there second. a second? Moved and seconded. Uh, Mary Lou, uh, roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 Thank you. Now we may have a report from our president, Dr. Hoyt. Good afternoon, Board of Governors, President Odeon, faculty, staff, and guests. Um, a short report this, this time. Um, just an update, the concrete pad that you approved for us to install at the SMC campus for the Wilson Electric program is moving along very nicely, and Wilson Electric obviously is is very heavily involved in building that for us, so we appreciate that. Um, last week was the American or Association of Community College Trustees Annual Congress, and uh, uh, Board of Governor member Evelyn and I presented um, on our SUNT CAC partnership. It was a well-attended session, and uh, we were very pleased with the turnout and the ability to showcase some of our workforce partners. Additionally, a couple weeks ago, I served on a workforce panel for um, the ACA, where it was Lucid Motors, myself, and a member of the ACA, and Sandra Watt, Watt, uh, what's her, um, Watson. Watson was here as well, and she facilitated it. But the important part, my important takeaway is when we were talking about Lucid Motors' employee base of 1,100 employees, 700, 700 of those employees have been through our training center. So um, we know it's getting the foot print that we really um, had hoped that it would, um, that we are training 700 people plus for their workforce, and they're very pleased with the output there as well. Um, and that's kind of really all I have this time. It, it, uh, it slipped up on me because we were gone last week, the board meeting, so I'll entertain any questions you may have. Anything? Hearing none, um, I would just like to... Uh, uh, personal note, thank Evelyn for stepping into that presentation. I was to be there and at the last minute due to personal concerns was not able to and she was willing to pick that up at the last minute and I appreciate that. Um, business affairs report. Is there a lot to... Hey, thank you, sir. Uh, two reports for your information, the monthly budget report and then the awarded bids over $20,000. The first one is a monthly budget report. It shows the uh, August 2021, second month of the new fiscal year. Our district's operating fund expenditures are about 13.85% of the total budget. This is a slight increase of about 2.38% from August 22, or August 2020, I should say which was at 11.47%. Nothing of any great significance there as a 12-month comparison. The second item is the amount, uh, award of bids over 20,000, and you will see there are 14 of them that are listed in your packet, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have on any of these documents. Any questions from the board? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Waka, the eSports equipment, can you talk about that just a little bit? Okay. So I can number four on your list. Sure thing. Um, this was for 48659 and it is for both the uh, SMC and the Santan campus, um, is to purchase the control audio and video equipment for the eSports rooms that we are now working on both at SMC and also the Santan campus. Uh, I'm not sure if the board's familiar, we do have an eSports room uh, on this campus 
um, if you haven't had a tour of that yet. So this is going to resemble pretty much what we have at this campus, which was the first one that we completed. All right, so this is a new build in the two other campuses. Correct. Um, replicating the one that is built here. Right, Re replicating them, uh, I'm not quite sure, honestly, if they're the same size or larger. Um, I see Cameron here, or same? Roughly. Roughly the same size as, as we have on our campus here. And we've had, we've had I'm sorry. Right. These are the last two campuses that uh, Signal Peak and Maricopa have them and STC and SMC. Right. Uh, and there's been a, I would assume there's been a, a large response or a, a demand for eSports. I understand that it's been fully utilized and maybe even a waiting list. That's why we engaged in the other campuses as well. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Mr. Wadja. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And our monitoring report, Dr. Cardenas, Dr. Gilliland. All right, Dr. Odiorn, uh, Governing Board, Dr. Elliott, Mary Lou, colleagues and guests, thank you for having us again today. Uh, so Dr. Gilliland and I are going to present on four different areas. Uh, today, the outcome that we're focused on is outcome two. Get through this. Outcome two, um, which focuses on access and ensuring all Pinal County residents have access to high quality innovative educational programs and opportunities to advance their degrees. So I'm gonna focus on the first three of those uh, that are related to our strategic enrollment and outreach for the college as a whole. But before I do that, I'd like to introduce our newly hired uh, director for Strate strategic enrollment management and outreach, uh, Sandra Lasher. So she's been a fabulous addition to our team and is working hard to help us to achieve many of the goals that we've set in place and, and also helping us to dream a little bit differently and, and look in different areas than we have in the past. So it's, it's been great to have her on board so far. Um, and she'll help with answering any questions should there be any at the end of the, the presentation. So the first um, item that we look at is the percentage of college-going students. The percentage of, of college-going students in general. So these are students who are directly out of high school uh, who choose to come to Central Arizona College. Um, just as I said in the last presentation, it's difficult knowing that last year, you know, we were in the midst of the pandemic. Um, I really will focus much more on what we're doing moving forward and kind of some of the things that we've seen recently um, with regard to our high school engagement uh, as a whole and those students that are right out of high school. But currently, um, it demonstrates that for the 2021 year, we were at about 19%, um, which is lower than what we had been last year as well as uh, lower than the national average, about in line with the national average. Um, the next population of students that we look at is our percentage of underserved students. This is um, focusing on students from specific uh, races and ethnicities that are underserved in our community, and this is an area that we've excelled in um, providing access to, to many groups of students, including this underserved population, um, where we're at 51% currently, which is an increase from what we've seen in the past, and also an increase both in comparison to Arizona Community Colleges and the, the national uh, comparisons as well. So still working to achieve the target of 60%, but, but definitely well on our way. And the third that I'll talk about um, are high school enrollment programs. And you might recall in the past, we, we focused specifically on dual enrollment, and this, this monitoring uh, report has changed a little bit, or this goal has changed a little bit to include all of our high school programs, being that our concurrent enrollment program is robust as well. So one of the things that I, I will share, um, although in the 1920 data that we're looking at here, there was a decrease to 786 students that were in our high school programs, I'll also share that for this year, our number of dual enrollment sections increased from 15 sec sections to 89 sections. So I definitely am looking forward to there being a, a huge increase in this report uh, for next year, both for concurrent and dual enrollment. We do know that many of our students shifted um, with our free tuition and um, expansion of our early, early college scholarship to cover both dual enrollment or concurrent enrollment. That was a change for us um, in the past. So they're able to take six credits of, of classes in high school uh, free of charge in-state tuition for them. So we know that some of it has been a shift from concurrent to dual enrollment, but we still anticipate there being a, a very large increase. Should I pause or? Okay. No, that's good. Okay. 
Um, so what I do want to share regarding the, the recent um, improvements that we've seen, we did do a redesign of our high school programs in general, which has really um, combined three different processes that we had into one, hand processes, written processes, into one electronic process, process that's enabling students to uh, much more easily in most cases be admitted and registered um, through the college. So just as within any process, we definitely saw some hiccups along the way that we're currently addressing, but it's, it's definitely a move in the right direction. As well as, um, as I indicated, the redesign of our early college scholarship um, to include both concurrent and dual enrollment. <coughs> um, as you know from discussions in the past, we've made a big change to our Promise for the Future uh, scholarship in focusing now on the Pinal Promise, which, which is our promise to any student who graduates from a Pinal County High School and lives within Pinal County um, having the, the Promise tuition available to them. So that's been a, a huge increase. In light of all of those fabulous changes that happened, then we decided to give free tuition um, for the fall and spring semester. So we now, for recent, uh, or I'm sorry, for upcoming uh, focuses, are focusing on resharing a lot of that information ensuring that the community is aware of, of the things that will be in place once the free tuition has ended. Um, really focusing uh, after the pandemic on lots of an increase of both training and uh, process evaluation regarding virtual services, uh, as well as really engaging in social media and different virtual um, means for, for advertising and marketing. Um, the planned improvements are really to expand, as I said, the communication that's going out to the high schools about all of the different programs. Uh, continuing to convert all of our remaining papers into electronic forms, um, focusing on promotional videos and really incorporating our video production um, staff member that we have now, Julie, who's done a fabulous job for us in, in helping to uh, promote different things in that manner, as well as expanding CAC Connect. So we'll be excited to be able to share with you as we continue to grow our CAC Connect program. So. Lots coming. I, I know the numbers definitely is, like I said, being um, a reflection of the pandemic are definitely not the, num the, you know, the direction that we would want them to go, but we're seeing such encouraging things as we move forward. So making fabulous project pro progress. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, and I will just pick up with the final piece of this. Um, oops, that is, okay, there we go. That's the four-year pathways, yes. So I'm speaking just briefly about the uh, connection to four-year pathways without leaving Pinal County. Um, and the intent here was, of course, to serve our uh, local residents with the ability for those who do want to <coughs> continue on with their education after achieving an associate's degree uh, with us here at Central Arizona College. Um, we are now up above, well up above, uh, what the board goal was of 10. We actually started at about 10 uh, when we began this portion of the monitoring report uh, back several years ago. Uh, we increased by one, and then in 2021, we were up to 16 that we could clearly identify. And, and let me just say briefly that these would be pathways where our um, our certificate, our degree program transfers as a whole piece um, without loss of credit to another program and then just continues on very uh, smoothly and seamlessly uh, and with the ability to do that locally. Um, I, I actually just wanted to say a couple of things about this that are not necessarily reflected just in the um, um, improved, um, the recent and planned improvements. Um, and that is that we have changed our focus just a little bit because one of the outcomes of the pandemic is, of course, there are so many more online programs. Uh, and now uh, there really are a lot more opportunities for people to transfer um, and stay locally and, and work with an online program. Um, but we realized um, we had already a number of articulation agreements uh, with other colleges and universities that weren't necessarily just staying in Pinal County. Um, in reviewing those, we, we actually decided that we were spending a lot of our time and energy to work out these articulation agreements um, when really the greater benefit was to the other institution. Um, they're not going to not accept those solid gen ed credits and programs uh, for our students who want to transfer. And when we um, drilled down and looked at data and found out how many of our students were actually going to those other institutions, they were very small numbers for the most part. 
Um, and so we decided to shift our focus and not pursue those articulation agreements specific, just in general, um, but to look specifically for these kinds of things, uh, the programs where our, our program transfers as a whole piece without loss of credit, not in bits and pieces, uh, and also to focus a little bit more on uh, programs such as the 9030 program that we have with NAU um, that allows our students to move into their, um, uh, it's the uh, operation uh, operational occupational leadership operational leadership program uh, where they can do 90 credits with us here at CAC that transfer as a whole piece and then they only have 30 credits remaining to do at NAU. And um, with, with an online component, they don't have to leave Pinal County. Um, they can get that degree very, very cost effectively. Uh, and, um, and, you know, our students tend to like to stay here with us. It's user friendly, they know us. Uh, and so this has been really a very, um, I think, successful uh, relationship. So we're looking for more uh, to expand those kinds of programs. And we're really looking to strengthen um, those transfer pathways uh, just with our in state universities. Uh, which is where most of our students go if they do transfer uh, because, again, there are better cost benefits and most of our residents um, tend to want to stay local. So, uh, so we're looking to strengthen those and make sure that students are able to transfer with no loss of credit and where possible to um, expand what they can do with us here at Central Arizona College before they transfer. Um, so that's really where our emphasis is right now, not so much in growing a whole lot of programs because suddenly we could grow a whole lot of programs, but that didn't seem to be anymore uh, the, um, the place to put our time and energy. Um, so I wanted, um, just wanted to say uh, a couple of uh, things as well about the recent and planned improvements. Um, and one of them is uh, in, in some of the recent and planned improvements in terms of student success overall, um, we were looking at enhanced uh, bla training in Blackboard, Blackboard Ultra for our faculty and staff, or for our faculty who are teaching. Um, we are continuing to offer uh, that training. We've had really strong partnerships with IT, uh, and um, one of our newer hires in particular who is also able to pick up some of that training. Uh, we are actually, although we're in a period of reflection, we are getting ready to go out for a new position uh, to better support a faculty professional development in-house uh, and focusing on, on um, especially the online uh, teaching and learning. Um, and I also want to say that although we tried very hard to add more face-to-face -face classes this semester, uh, it turned out that our students were still choosing mostly virtual, and that may be partly because of the pandemic, but also we think partly because uh, they discovered that there was a convenience to that and because our virtual offerings have improved quite a lot. Uh, we have shifted um, largely, or to, at least in, in very large part, to more synchronous offerings uh, where students have the ability to have that face-to-face -face experience, but you know, can get off their job, get on their computer at home or wherever they might be and, and get those courses. And so, um, so we're really kind of changing our strategies a little bit and we're looking to do some additional surveys and to gather more data as we go forward to try to, you know, enrich those, those possibilities. But um, so that is really the end of my presentation and I'm available for questions as is Dr. Cardenas if you have any more for us. Thank you. It's amazing how much we can learn from a year or so of pandemic. <laughs> we learned things that we didn't expect to learn, which was quite interesting. So yes. we're going to take that and run with it. Any okay. questions from the board regarding the monitoring report? Thank you both. Okay, Appreciate thank you very that. much. Uh, that concludes our agenda. Our next meeting is November 16th on Superstition Mountain Campus. And again, I want to thank you all for being here today. We're adjourned.